Today I'm going to show you a simple way to make the salted salmon that's often served as a part of Japanese breakfasts. So stick around! Traditional Japanese breakfasts consist of a bowl of plain rice and miso soup accompanied by two or three side dishes. In this spread, I have a slice of salted salmon with some grated daikon as my primary side dish, and I also have some Japanese pickles and tamagoyaki. Making Japanese breakfasts may seem a bit intimidating at first, but there's nothing complicated about them, and the salted salmon or shiojake makes for an easy centerpiece for your breakfast spread. The trickiest part is to salt the salmon evenly, but I'm going to show you a simple hack to make this a no-brainer. So let's have a look at our ingredients. I've got two 100 gram slices of salmon, two cups of water, two tablespoons of meeting, and 12 grams of salt. For the brine, I'm going to add the salt, meeting, and water to a food storage container. Then I'm gonna whisk everything together until the salt is fully dissolved. Now I'm gonna place the pieces of salmon in the brine and cover this with the lid. This goes into the refrigerator to cure overnight. After curing for at least 12 hours, or a maximum of one day, your salmon should end up looking like this. Then you want to remove the salmon from the brine and use paper towels to pat them dry. If you're not going to be using them right away, you can wrap them tightly with plastic wrap and store them in the fridge for up to a few days. Or you can bag the individually wrapped salmon in a zipper bag and freeze them if you want to store them for longer. Before we grill these up, I want to take a quick moment to thank my supporters who helped to make this video possible. If you're learning something new from my recipes and want to help, hit the link in the description down below to see how you can pitch in. Now you've got a choice to make. In Japan, our stoves have a fish grill under them, but you can also use a toaster oven or a full-size oven set to broil. Just set your salmon on a wire rack over a tray and broil them until they're cooked through. The other option is to use a frying pan over medium heat and I'm going to add a splash of oil and then place the salmon in the pan skin side down. Then you just need to let these fry undisturbed until the skin side is browned and the salmon is opaque, about a third of the way up the sides. This took about two minutes on my stove. If you notice the salmon browning too quickly, you'll want to turn the heat down to keep them from burning. Now you'll want to carefully flip the salmon over with a spatula and brown the other side until the salmon is cooked through. This should take about another two minutes. While we wait for the salmon to cook, let's prepare the daikon oroshi. I've got the top half of a daikon radish here, which works best for raw preparations because it's sweeter and less spicy than the root end. After trimming it down to size, I'm going to use a knife to peel it. That's because daikon has a fibrous layer under the skin, which can make your daikon oroshi a bit stringy. By using a knife, you can remove a thicker layer of peel, which makes it work a lot better than a vegetable peeler. Now I'm going to grate the daikon with a daikon grater. This makes it easiest because the gaps between the teeth keep them from getting clogged. If you don't have one, the rasp side of a box grater will work, or you can use a large microplane. When you're done grating the radish, you need to drain off the excess liquid from the pulp, otherwise it's going to end up watery. You can do this with your hands, but I like to use a fine mesh sieve like this tea strainer. Just add the daikon and give it a light press to coax out some of the excess water. Just be careful not to overdo this, otherwise it's going to end up dry. When the salmon is cooked through, flip it over one more time and we're ready to plate it up. Just place the salmon onto a plate, leaving enough room on one side to add the daikon. 
Then I'm gonna put down a green chiso leaf for a splash of color, and I've got a handful of the drained daikon oroshi here, which I'm gonna shape into a ball. Set it on the shiso, and our Japanese breakfast is done! Let's add a splash of soy sauce to the daikon, and I'm ready to eat! Itadakimasu! The salmon is tender and flaky, but the brine keeps it from getting dried out. Together with some of the daikon oroshi, it's a bite of bliss that goes perfectly with a bowl of rice. This salted salmon recipe is just one component of a Japanese breakfast. So check out the description below for links to other Japanese breakfast recipes like miso soup, tamagoyaki, and Japanese pickles. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, let me know by giving this a big thumbs up and by sharing it with all your friends that love Japanese breakfasts. Well, it's a little late for breakfast here, so I'm gonna have the salmon for lunch, but I'll catch you in the next one.